We'll just go ahead and edit that out. Okay, we're going to be going over chapter six today, which is on procedures or proc for short. And a proc is essentially just a little block of code that we can call whenever we need to. So for example, if you had uh, some damage code, every time you deal damage, you need to adjust some variables, you need to check for death, maybe you need to update your UI. And so instead of writing that out every time that you need to deal damage, you can just make a single proc that you call and it handles all of that for you. So let's jump in real quick and get started. So that's all there is to making a proc. It's very similar to a verb, which we've gone over in other videos. The only difference is you can't actually call this. Uh, you don't have any button to click in game for a proc. So if we come into the game, you go to your commands, you'll see hurt self is not in here. So to actually access it, we need just a way to call the proc. And for testing purposes, we can call it right through a verb. So in here, we're making a verb, and now this is what actually will appear in game. This will actually have our little button, and when we click on it, it's gonna call the code within our verb. And in this case, all we do in our verb is call the proc that we've made. So we click hurt self, and you'll see you hurt yourself, health is now 75 out of 100. And there we go. Now we'd be dead, but right now it doesn't kill us, and we can go into the negative. So, really easy. Let's uh, expand this just a little bit more. So it's a little more clear of how useful this is. Okay, so now I did essentially a little death check here. So what we do now when we're in game is when we run this, it'll work just like before, except now when we get to zero, it says you died. It teleports us way down over here and sets our HP back to the maximum value. So we'd hurt ourselves again. You see now it's back to 75. And all we're doing here is very simple. We're just checking if our current health, and I put source here just so you understand that we're accessing the source's current health, which is the mob that is calling the proc in this case. Typically, you wouldn't have source, but when you're learning, it's totally fine. So all we're saying, when we call the proc, so we hit our verb, it calls the proc. And then in the proc, we instantly minus 25 health. We output a message, and then we do a check. And we just say, if our current health is less than or equal to zero, output you died, teleport them to uh, XYZ coordinate 111, and then set their health back to max health so they're not going to still be at zero after they die. And let's go ahead and add in another variable here. Let's do... So we're just going to have another check for is invulnerable to know if the mob can deal damage or not. And we just define this under the mob and we gave it a default value of false. And we're going to come in here now and just do a little check at the start. And we'll say, so all we're doing here is we're doing an if check and we're saying if we're invulnerable and another way to do this is if is invulnerable is equal to true, then we're invulnerable. Else, meaning if this statement is not true, the statement is not correct, then the else code is going to run. So if we're not invulnerable, we're going to hurt ourselves as usual. 
Uh, and all we need now is a little verb to toggle if we're invulnerable or not. So this verb here, all we're doing is setting, when we call this, we're setting our is invulnerable variable, or that belongs to us, we're setting it to the opposite value. So if it's true, now it's going to be false. If it's false, it's going to be true. That's all that happens here. So now we can do this in the game. So we'll come in and we'll go ahead and hurt ourselves. And we successfully hurt ourselves. We hurt ourselves. Toggle and vulnerability. Hurt ourselves. Won't let us. Now we're invulnerable. And we go ahead and click it again. And we can hurt ourselves and kill ourselves. So you can see a couple of operators I'm using here. We actually have a video on uh, different operators, which we'll go ahead and link in the description. But just a couple things to know. You know, the double equal sign, for example, is just a check for is equal to. We're just saying is is invulnerable equal to true. And if it is, we run the code. Uh, minus equals is just saying we want to minus this value from the current value. It's the same as saying, this is exactly the same. It's just minusing 25 or setting our current health to current health minus 25. So you just use minus equal for that. Same for plus equals to add 25. So if we want to make our proc a little more flexible though, because right now it just calls this code every time and we're not really able to customize anything. So to do that, we want to actually be able to pass in a variable, pass in some numbers, some data. So to do that, we'll keep it simple. So we want to pass in how much damage we want to deal. Let's go ahead and we're going to make a new local variable and we're going to give it a default value of 10. So now this variable is being created right here and it's the same. Technically, this is what's happening. We're creating it right here. You don't need to write bar here though. So we're making a local variable and we're setting a default value to 10. And what we want to do instead of minus in 25, we just want to minus damage to deal. And we also should output the amount of damage. So now we'll know how much damage we dealt. And if we run this right now and we hurt self, you'll see we hurt ourselves for 10 because we gave it a default value of 10. But how can we modify that? And that's what we're going to do by passing a new value. So down in our verb, where we're calling this proc on this proc down here, we want to pass through a new value for damage to deal. And to do that, all we have to do is write a number. So if we wrote 30 and we call it, now it's going to set because damage to deal is the first argument within this proc, we know that 30 is the first argument we're passing. Therefore, damage to deal is now going to be 30. Uh, you can also specify what variable you want to access. So you could say, and this way you could go out of order if you wanted to, but you typically won't write it that way. You just all we have to do is pass the number. We know it's the first number. It lines up with the first argument. So there we go. It is hurting for 30, and that's exactly what we're passing in. Now let's customize that just a little bit. And let's actually let us type in a number. So we'll say n is num and we'll pass through n. 
So now when we run this and we hurt ourselves, you'll see it'll actually ask us how much we want to hurt ourselves for. And we'll just say 17 and we hurt ourselves for 17. And there we go. That way it can be customized every time. So the scalability of this is very useful. You can actually pass through variables. You pass in a mob variable. You can pass in anything you want. And it really gives you a lot of flexibility for all of your different procs for how you want to handle things. All right. Now let's go ahead and we'll make another proc here. And this time we're going to make it a global proc. So to make it global, we just have to put it all the way at the left so it's not indented under anything. You know, so for the mob procs, we wrote mob proc hurt self, whereas a global, we just write proc. And now anything can access this proc. It doesn't have to just be for mobs. Anything can can use it. What we're going to do here is we're just going to make a little proc that will let us set the day of the week. So let's write this out real quick. All right, so that's a little bit of code. So let's step through everything I just did. So we have a new global variable named current day, and we set it to Monday by default. And so exactly, exactly the same as a global proc is we have it defined all the way to the left. It's not indented under anything. So we know this is a global variable that everything can access. Next, we made inside of our proc, we create a new local variable and we named it days of the week. And I initialized it as a list and we gave it a bunch of default values. And we do actually have a video on lists if this is confusing to you. So we just listed one day for every day of the week. And down here, we make another new local variable and we name it choice and choice is going to be an input, which is a built in beyond proc DM proc. And we're going to have the string in here for the message, what it's going to ask us, select a day of the week. And we're going to have the result can be null or anything in days of the week. And then finally, we check if there was a valid choice. Then we set current day to that choice and then output to the world. It is now current day. So we'll go ahead and run this so it's not so confusing. We'll come here and we are going to need a verb because it's still a proc and there's no way to do it. So. Let's go ahead and just make a quick verb for that. And just like the hurt self, we're going to make a mob verb named change day. And the only code that happens in this verb is we call the proc set day of week. So now when we run it, we can go ahead and click change day and it'll give us a list, the same list that we just created. And we'll select a new day and it will say it is now Thursday. Change the day. It is now Tuesday. It is now Sunday. There you go. So now we're able to call this proc and just go ahead and change the day of the week, which is a global variable. So that's a pretty simple uh, proc that we have going on here. We're just able to edit the day of the week. So let's go ahead and make another proc. And this time we're going to mess with returns just a little bit. So we'll make a new one.
All right, so we went and we made a new proc and a new verb. So let's walk through this real quick. So what we're doing in return day of week is we're making a switch statement based on the current day. And a switch statement, if you don't know, is just a better way to handle a bunch of if statements. So instead of saying, you know, if something, else if something, else if something, else if, when the code runs, it has to check this statement, then it checks this statement, and if it's still not true, it checks this, if it's still not true, it checks this. Whereas for a switch, all we have to do is it will jump to the proper if statement. So when we pass in, we want the switch to be based on current day, and it knows current day, if current day is any of these values, or any of these values, it's gonna run the corresponding code. So we're just checking if the current day is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, then we're gonna return a string. And in the string, we say it's current day off to work. But if it's Saturday or Sunday, we're gonna return it's current day, enjoy your weekend. If none of this is true, then by default, we're gonna return null. And we're gonna use this proc down here in our new verb. And this verb, all we're doing is we're checking the day of the week and we're gonna output the results. So we make a new local variable named returned results and we set this to our proc. And when you use a proc like this, this actually is called right here. So whatever results that it returns is now going to be set to return results. So we know in the code, when we call this proc, it's gonna run up here, it's gonna run through all of this. So it's gonna return either this string, this string, or null. And now that value is set to return results. So this is essentially gonna be like this, right? It's gonna return the string or null. And now that we have that, we know it's gonna be one of those. So we do one more check and we say, if we have return results, meaning if it's either of these strings, we're going to output to the user the string. If it's not uh, either of these, which means else, which is uh, null, if it's null, we're just gonna output an error and say, there's no valid day of the week. Now this will probably never run unless there's a really big issue, but we're just going to keep it here for error prevention, just in case. So let's go ahead and give this a try. So now, just like before, we can change the day of the week to Wednesday and we can check the day. We say it's Wednesday off to work. We'll change it to Monday. It's Monday off to work. But if we change it to Saturday, you'll see it says it's Saturday. Enjoy your weekend. So that's a very simple understanding of a proc and some returns and just how you can really use them in your project because these are very important. There's a lot of ways you can use returns and procs. So uh, that's it for this chapter and we'll see you next time.